Hey everybody, today I'm going to be talking about pricing, and I'll give you a recent real-life scenario that showcases why it's important to consider more than just the pay when taking on work. I see many questions online about pricing your services. Questions like, what's the average rate? How much should I charge for this? How much would you charge for that? Let's take a look at these questions and discuss why the answer is really never any more clear than it depends. Wouldn't life be simpler if the answer was just $75 an hour or $200 an episode? Well, that's the first problem with this. All of this is in US dollars. Not all clients are based in the US, so trying to charge US rates to someone living in another part of the world it might not translate because the cost of living is much higher in the U.S. than in many other areas. I mean, even within the U.S., the cost of living in New York City or L.A., it's much higher than it is in a place like Omaha, Nebraska. This is just one of the reasons why these types of questions aren't very helpful for us. We all have our own unique situations that they directly impact how much we charge. Many editors work traditional full-time jobs and they edit on the side. Their needs and situation will impact their rates differently than someone who is fully self-employed. Those two elements can have a big impact on just how much someone charges. Another one is confidence. That may seem a bit odd, but someone who lacks confidence in themselves or their skills, they're more likely to charge less and negotiate against themselves because they're living in a world of scarcity and they have this mindset of, I can't afford to lose this potential client. From that perspective, there really isn't a right or wrong price. There's only the price we need to charge to make this a sustainable activity. We don't even get to decide what is too much or too little for our services. Each prospective client, they make that decision for themselves. What is too much for one client might be too low for another. Just look at Upwork or Fiverr to see the, the wide range of prices the editors charge. Would you take this job? Or should I take this job? This is another question I see pop up somewhat regularly. And again, they're difficult to answer for many of the same reasons. We all have different skill sets, experience, and financial needs. So here's an example of a job opportunity we were recently presented with. As I describe this project, think about whether it's a job you would take. Seeking graphic design and video editing support to update our course content and create a new PowerPoint template for ongoing course development. The materials to be updated include video recordings consisting of narration over the slides and the downloadable PDFs of each slide deck. The brand guidelines, 131 PowerPoint decks, 131 video files, approximately 110 hours in length, and the corresponding audio files, 131 audio files, approximately 110 hours in length. 131 PowerPoint decks updated to reflect current branding, update images on slides with on-brand imagery and stock photography, 131 video files, and sync existing audio files with the corresponding slides, one new PowerPoint slide deck template consisting of a title page, five copy only slides, five image and copy slides, and the timeline is seven weeks. We were already a little hesitant because this is a big project, but we didn't know if this was something we could consider without knowing the budget, so we asked. And don't ever be afraid to ask for the budget or how much a client is willing to spend. The budget for this project is 10000 to 20000 It's not a particularly difficult job. I mean, anyone with Canva and 
basic video editing experience can do this job. At this point, how many of you would take the job? Let's dig a little bit deeper because we still don't have enough information to make a decision. So we asked about how many slides. Actually, we did ask this at the same time as the budget, but there's approximately 5,600 slides. Now we've got enough information to really start looking at some numbers to see if it's worth taking this job. Let's look at each line item. Templates. Title page, five copy only slides, five image and copy slides. So we've got 11 templates to create. These shouldn't take long, assuming the client already has 11 existing templates for us to work from that only need to be updated to reflect their current branding. Estimate, two to three hours. Slides. 5,600 slides with the majority having text. So this is basic copy and paste, then formatting to fit the template. Estimate four to 12 slides per hour. Remember, at this point, we haven't seen the slides to really have a good idea of what to expect, so we have to ballpark it for best case and worst case scenarios. For the video, 131 video files, 110 hours, and we're syncing existing audio files with the corresponding slides. I'm estimating two to five hours per hour of video. And now that we have our rough estimates, let's do some math. The templates, three to four hours, slides, 467 to 1400 hours, video, 220 to 550 hours. We're looking at a minimum of 690 hours and a max of 1,954 hours. Now, let's take a look at the hourly pay, assuming the budget's 20,000. Our best case scenario is 20,000 divided by 690 hours, and that works out to 28.99 per hour. Our worst case scenario of 20,000 divided by 1,954 works out to $10.24 per hour. This is where it's really important to know your lowest acceptable hourly rate. But what if you don't know what that is or just feel like you're guessing how much to charge? I cover this and much more about pricing and determining your own rates in my upcoming course, Pricing Your Podcast Services, Your Value, Your Worth, Your Rates. The course will be released September 16th, 2024, but I will be offering a pre-sale discount to those who are signed up to the mailing list. So if you're interested and you're not already signed up, sign up now. You can sign up at tansyasteracademy.com slash contact, and there will be a link in the description below. The pre-sale will be open from September 11th through September 15th. I'm using this example because it showcases why it's important to have our internal hourly rate dialed in. It's so easy to just pick some arbitrary number and say, this is my hourly rate. Does your hourly rate factor in your overhead? Stuff like expenses and taxes. Does it include a profit margin? Does it provide a buffer if you underestimate the amount of work involved? Now, back to the example, and let's drill down a little bit more. In our best case scenario, this would take a little over 17 weeks at 40 hours a week. In the worst case, it will take nearly 49 weeks. And that is just for the production work. It doesn't include uploading, downloading files, admin stuff, communications, render times, or project management. Would you still consider taking this job? We politely declined the job because the budget wasn't in line with the amount of work required. Even if we outsourced, we wouldn't be able to work with anyone we know, and given the scope and budget, we'd be raked over the coals for posting in some of the communities where we'd typically post these types of jobs. This example shows why it's important to understand how long the work takes you, and it's easy to underestimate that. The only way to know how long something takes is to be diligent about tracking your time. Don't track only production time. Track the time you spend on communications, the admin work, 
and other unbillable tasks to get a better idea of just how long everything takes. This information can help us build better processes and find more efficient ways of working when we see where all of our time goes. It also helps us when we decide to offer a new service to ensure that we aren't grossly undercharging. And I really do advocate to my coaching clients to not offer services until you have an idea of just how long it will take to do it. If you're, let's say, deciding to offer video editing, do a handful of practice runs to really get an idea of how long it will take you to set up the project, edit it, mix and master the audio, and render the whole thing out. This will help you avoid taking on the job and finding out that it takes longer or is more involved than you anticipated. So what about you? What pricing issues do you face? What questions do you have about pricing? Are you confident in your rates? Let me know in the comments below. And again, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.